So as you can see by the intro for this video, I'm going to show you all how to create an animated subwoofer effect in Adobe After Effects. So this music visualizer will react to the beat of the music. So when the beat kicks in, the animation will also react to the beat of the music. Now for this video, we'll be using a simple script called TuneSync. This is being created and designed by IVG Design. There'll be links down below to his social media if you want to support him. He has a YouTube channel. He has a plugin called Extrudalizer. And also he has a Discord group if you have any questions about this whatsoever. Now you also want to go down in the description down below and get yourself to the project file download link. This will give you the template for the audio reactor and the TuneSync script. You must have these two in order for this to work. Now I've also included the subwoofer that I created. You have all the materials here that you need to follow along with this tutorial. Now for the music link, there'll be a separate link so you can also support the creator of the song, but you can use any sound or any music that you want. It doesn't have to be the same one as me. Now the first step is to go ahead and install TuneSync into your After Effects. This step is so easy. All you need to do is close down your After Effects and go to File Explorer on your computer. You want to locate where you've downloaded or installed Adobe After Effects. So for me, it's on my C drive. Go to Program Files, go to Adobe, Adobe After Effects, go to Support Files. Scrolling further down, we want to go to Scripts, Script UI Panels, and then just go ahead and copy and paste this expression or script, should I say, into here. You want to replace this one, and then you want to continue. Now, once you've got it installed, all you need to do now is go ahead and open up that template, the audio reactor, using Adobe After Effects, of course. And straight away, you're going to get an error message, which will basically say you need to convert it to the latest version since it's an older version. You just want to press OK. So pretty much the way that this template works, it is so simple. You have yourself a visualization of the different frequencies when you import a music or sound into this template right here. So at the moment, nothing is going to happen because we don't have any sound whatsoever or any audio tracks. But in order to import a sound or music, you want to double left click on the music placeholder and you want to get yourself the song, drag it into here, and there we go. We now have the music loaded in. And if you have a look at this now, you will notice you see these big waves. Now by default, this is set to deep bass. And if you go to the select frequency, you can go to effect and controls. So the first one will allow you to change the scale, which if your waves go outside of the area, you can just bring them back down so you can actually see it visually. You have the different ranges in here. If you wanted to use a preset, whether it's you want to target the high end or if you want to target the low end, this will specifically target those high pitch sounds rather than the bass. Now you'll also notice by now you have the selected frequency at the top with the output power. You want to move this around until you find the perfect frequency that you're looking for. And every time that it goes inside of this box and the output power goes up, the animation will react to the beat of the music. Now for us, what we want to do is we want to target the manual one and we want to set this one to 211. What this will do is it will narrow the peaks and the visualization so we can target a very specific area, which is this one right here. This one right here is perfect because a subwoofer has two perfect frequency ranges that we want to target. Now, the first one is going to be the deep bass. So this is this big peak right here. And we also want to target the more average waves like this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and target this peak first. You want to drag this over. We're going to make this more narrow and drag the corners in as well. 
what we're going to do now is we're going to separate and get ourselves a second audio reactor and we're going to target this peak right here. And to do this, all we need to do is go back to project. You want to select this one and press Control or Command and D to duplicate it. Once you've got yourself the second one, we're going to double left click to open this up. And now we're going to target those average peaks right here. So for now, we're going to widen this one out and make it more wider so we can reach a wider range. So around here will be a good area to place it. Once you've done that, we can now start to create the animation for the subwoofer. So you want to go to composition, go to new composition, set it to the same settings, 4K, 30 FPS, change the duration to the song that you've got it set to. And then we're just going to put it to any background color that you want it to be. Once you've got yourself this new composition, we can now bring the subwoofer materials, drag these in to After Effects. If your mouse doesn't glitch up like mine, you can just drag them in and there we go. We're just going to press S for scale and set this to 70% for the scale. We're just going to minimize these and then scroll back out to have a look at the subwoofer. What we need to do is we need to also copy and paste the song from here into comp one so we can actually see it or actually hear it in this case. Now, the first one is of course the main subwoofer area, which is this Y area. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to window and we can now use the tune sync script. Now by default, it's going to pick up the first one. And sometimes if your second one doesn't appear, this is because you just need to click on the refresh button and this will pick it up. Now for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to target this main area right here, the Y area, press S for scale, and we're just going to target the scale right here. For this one, we're going to press tune sync, and this will give you the option to target the X, Y, or both. The difference between this is X is only the width, the Y is the height only, and then this one is both. So it's going to be the X and Y. We're going to select this one, press OK, and this will open up the settings in the effect and controls. But we just want to tell it that we want it 70% to be normal. So this is the average size it's going to be. And then the maximum is going to be 77. And as you can see, this will now make it react to the beat of the music. The next step from here is to go ahead and also do the same step for the outer ring, which is this gray one. You want to press S for scale, select this one, and we're going to swap it over to the first one. Go ahead and click on Tune Sync, select yourself both, and then you want to press OK. For this one, we're going to set it to 70, and then the maximum to 76. We're also going to apply it to this one as well. So same as last time, press S for Scale, select the scale, and we're going to Tune Sync this one as well. For this one, we're going to set it to 70%. And for the maximum, let's say 75. We don't want it to go too far out. And then final two is, of course, these two. For this one, tune sync. We're also going to change this one to 69. And then for this one, we're going to set it to 74, let's say. Just so the ring is a little bit smaller. And then finally, the last one as well, we're going to set the scale, tune sync, set it to both. And for this one, we're just going to set it to 70% on normal and around, let's say 74 for the maximum. We can then minimize this and these other two as well. And if we have a look at this and we have a look at preview, you can see that this will now react to the beat of the music.